Hi everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to tackle a problem in complex matrices and uh, specifically we're going to look at diagonalizing a complex matrix. So given this matrix A, uh, we're asked to find its eigenvalue matrix lambda and its eigenvector matrix X. And one thing to note about this matrix A is that if we take its conjugate transpose, it's actually equal to itself. So in uh, Professor Strang's uh, book, he combines this notation to be uh, superscript H to mean conjugate transpose. So if you were to take the transpose of this matrix and then conjugate all the elements, you would find that A equals uh, its conjugate transpose, and we call this property Hermitian. OK, so I'll let you think about this for a moment, and I'll be back in a sec. OK, welcome back. So what's the first step in uh, computing the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of a matrix? It's to take a look at the characteristic equation. So specifically, we take det of a minus lambda i And quite possibly, the only thing new with this problem is that uh, the entries of the matrix A are complex. Now, we, you may have already seen that uh, uh, lambda is being complex, but we're going to work this out explicitly. So if I take the determinant, we get det of 2 minus lambda, 3 minus lambda. We have 1 minus i, 1 plus i. We want to set this to 0. This then gives us a polynomial for lambda. One plus i, one minus i. We set it equal to zero. We can expand out this term. We get six minus five lambda plus lambda squared. Uh, these two terms, you'll note, are complex conjugates of each other. This tends to make things simple. So we have minus 1 minus i squared is going to give us 2. Because there are uh, differences of squares, the cross terms involving i cancel. And we get the characteristic equation. Lambda squared minus 5 lambda plus 4 equals 0. And specifically, we can factorize this equation. We see that there's roots of minus 1, or factorizes into factors of lambda minus 1 and lambda minus 4, which then give us roots of lambda is 1 and lambda is 4. So one, one curious point to note is that the eigenvalues are real in this case. 1 and 4 are real, whereas the matrix that we started with was complex. And this is a general property of Hermitian matrices. So even though they might be complex matrices, Hermitian matrices always have real eigenvalues. OK, so this is the first step when uh, uh, asked to diagonalize a matrix. The second step is to find the eigenvectors. And to do that, what we have to do is we have to look at uh, the cases for lambda equals 1 and lambda is equal 4 separately. So let's first look at the case of lambda is equal to 1. And specifically, we're going to be looking for a vector such that a minus lambda i times the vector v is 0. And if we've done things properly, this matrix lambda minus, or sorry, a minus lambda i should be singular. So if we take two, uh, a minus lambda i, we're going to get 1, 1 minus i, 1 plus i, 3 minus 1 is 2. And I'll write out components of v, which are v1 and v2. And we want this to be 0. And you'll note that it's, it's always the case, it's almost always the case that uh, when we work out a minus lambda i, the second row is going to be a constant multiple of the first row. And this must be the case because uh, these two rows must be linearly dependent on each other for the matrix a minus lambda i to be singular. So if you look at this, you might think that 
these two rows aren't necessarily linearly independent, but the point is that there's complex numbers involved. And indeed, actually, if we were to multiply this first row by 1 plus lambda, we would get 1 plus lambda and 2. And you note that that's exactly the second row. So this second row is actually 1 plus lambda times the first row. So these rows are actually linearly dependent on each other. OK, so what values of v1 and v2 can we take? Well, we just need to make this top row multiplied by v1 and v2 equal to 0. And then because the second row is a constant multiple of the first row, we're automatically guaranteed that the second equation holds. So just by uh, looking at it, I'm going to take v1 is equal to 1 minus i, and v2 is negative 1. So we see that 1 times 1 minus i minus 1 times 1 minus i is going to give us 0. So this is one solution. And of course, we can take any constant multiple times this eigenvector, and that's also going to be an eigenvector. So I'll just write this out. 1 minus i minus 1 is the eigenvector for lambda is equal to 1. For lambda is equal to 4, again, a minus lambda i is going to give us negative 2, 1 minus i, 1 plus i, 3 minus lambda is going to be minus 1. And I'll call this vector u1 and u2. And again, we want u1 and u2 equal to 0. Or sorry, the matrix multiplied by u1, u2 e is equal to 0. And just by looking at this again, uh, we see that the second row is actually a constant multiple of the first row. Uh, for example, if we were to multiply this, uh, this row by negative 2 and this row by 1 plus i, we would see that they're constant multiples of each other. So I can take u to be, uh, for example, 1 and 1 plus i. How did I get this? Well, I just looked at the second equation because it's a little simpler. And I said, well, if I have 1 plus i here, I can just say multiply it by 1. And then minus 1 times 1 plus i, when I add them up, is going to vanish. So this is how I get the second one. Now, there's something curious going on. Uh, and this is going to be another property of Fermi-Shin matrices. But if you actually take a look at this eigenvector, it will be orthogonal to this eigenvector when we uh, conjugate the elements and dot the two vectors together. So this is another very special property of uh, complex uh, Hermitian matrices. OK, so the last step now is to construct these matrices lambda and s. Now, we already know what lambda is because it's just the matrix. It's the diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues 1 and 4. So we have 1, 0, 0, and 4. Now, I'm going to do something special for s. Uh, I've, noticed, I've noted that these two uh, vectors, u and v, are orthogonal to each other. So what do I mean by orthogonal? Specifically, if I were to take v, conjugate transpose, and multiply it by u, we would end up getting 1 plus i minus 1. This would be v conjugate transpose. 1, 1 plus i. And we see that when we multiply these out, we get 0. So when we have orthogonal eigenvectors, there's a trick that we can do to build up this matrix S and S inverse. What we can do is we can normalize u and v. So specifically, we can take uh, any constant multiple of u and v, and it's still going to be an eigenvector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take u and v and multiply them by their length. So for example, u, the amplitude of its top component is 1. The amplitude of its uh, bottom component is 2. So notice that the modulus of the complex number 1 plus i is 2. So uh, we have, uh, sorry, it's, it's root 2. Uh, the complex modulus is root 2. So the amplitude of the uh, entire vector is root 3. It's 1 plus 2 squared quantity square rooted, so it's root 3. So what we can do is we can build up this uh, matrix S using a normalization factor of 1 over root 3. 
And I'm, I'm going to take the, uh, the first uh, column is the uh, first eigenvector that corresponds to eigenvalue 1. And then the second uh, column is the second eigenvector, which corresponds to eigenvalue 4. And the reason I've put in this root 3 here is to make this column uh, unit length 1 and this column unit length 1. And uh, the reason I do this is because now this matrix S, it's, uh, it's, it's possible to check that this matrix S is actually unitary, which means that its inverse is actually just equal to its conjugate transpose. So this is a very special property of the, of the eigenvectors of a Hermitian matrix. <clears throat> OK, and then lastly, I'm just going to write down the diagonalization of A. So if I have A, because I have its eigenvector matrix S and its eigenvalue matrix lambda, it's possible to decompose A into a product of S lambda S inverse. And because S is, Hermi or S is uh, unitary, its inverse is actually its conjugate transpose. So just to put the pieces together, we have A is equal to S, which is 1 over root 3, 1 minus i minus 1, 1, 1 plus i, times a diagonal matrix, 1, 0, 0, 4, times S inverse which is going to be its conjugate transpose. So what I do is I conjugate each element. So 1 minus i becomes 1 plus i, and vice versa. And then I take the transpose. So I get 1 plus i. Transposing swaps the minus 1 and 1. And at the end of the day, I get s inverse is uh, just this uh, matrix here. OK, and if you were to multiply these matrices out, you'd see that you actually do recover a. OK, so just to summarize uh, quickly, even though we were given a complex matrix A, the, the process to diagonalize A was the, is the same as what we've seen before. The first step is uh, to find the characteristic equation and the eigenvalues. And then the second step is to find the eigenvectors. And you do this in the same procedure. But in general, the eigenvectors can be uh, complex. And for this very special case, uh, when A is Hermitian, the eigenvalues are real, and the eigenvectors are orthogonal to each other. OK, so I think I'll conclude here, and I'll see you next time.